Hello everyone, my name is Bryson and I'm the internship director here at Hungry Generation Church. And today with me, we're having an exclusive interview with Pastor Marlando Jordan from Word of the Faith Center. And he was here with us just this morning teaching to our interns um, and just pouring into their lives. And he's been in ministry for 22 years now, 22 right? years. Yeah, so uh, he has lots of knowledge to share with you guys, um, longevity in the ministry. The, the focus of our interview today is really going to be focusing towards those who are in ministry. Um, I believe that the things that he has to share with you today will be a blessing to your heart. It will be wisdom and knowledge to keep you going and to keep you fighting the good fight um, for Jesus Christ, for the ministry to see um, the world saved. And so... Pastor, thank you be, for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, so we, we you know, uh, like I said, you were with us today with the, with the interns, and I know people who are watching that may want to know, like, how did you come to know Christ? Well, you know, I was blessed to be raised in a Christian home. My mom raised us in church, and it was in 1985 when I really accepted Jesus into my life for the very first time. I remember praying, I remember giving my life to the Lord, but it wasn't really until I got filled with the Holy Spirit at the age of 13, I was at a summer camp, mm -hmm. and I mean, once I got filled with the Spirit, I remember it like yesterday, it was a real encounter with God. Mm -hmm. My life has never been the same since. And so again, after that is when things begin to take off for me. That's when my desire for the Word of God increased. Yeah. That's when my desire for prayer increased. It was shortly after that that we switched churches, started going to Word of Faith Center. I just really, I was just, I was just passionate for God. I just, I just wanted to, you know, have that real authentic relationship with Him. That's awesome. That's so awesome to hear. What point um, in your walk with Christ did you get called into ministry? That point that you felt like. This is, this is where I'm supposed to be. It was during that same season, because during that time, or even before that, I remember my pastor, when we were attending the, the church in Pasco, he, he says, so what, are, what are you gonna do for the Lord? <laughs> I says, oh, I don't know, you know? He's like, do you wanna be a preacher? I'm like, I don't know, I wanna be an architect. And so I kinda, had, I was in this place in my life where I wanted to be a preacher and an architect, so bivocational. Yeah. But it was that same year, I believe it was in 1990 or maybe 1991, you know, this was after I was filled with the Spirit and just going to Word of Faith Center, excited about being involved in the youth ministry. We were in a Sunday evening service. One of the, I believe at the time, the worship leader was bringing the Word of God that night. There was an altar call. I responded to the altar call. Don't remember what it was about, but I remember falling out under the power of God. He looked at my mom. He says, this, this boy is called to the ministry. <laughs> and it was really at that moment, and even before that, that was confirmation. I knew in my heart that I was called to ministry. I didn't have all the details as far as what avenue I would go in ministry, whether it was youth ministry. I knew it wasn't music ministry yeah. <laughs> or pastoring or evangelism, but I knew I was called. I just knew that I knew that I knew that I was called to the ministry. Wow, that's so awesome, that's so awesome. You know, uh, going off a little bit of what we were just saying, um, how did you, how was that, that process look like for you? I know we're going a little off script here, but how was that journey for you, um, finding your way into where you are now as a senior pastor? Well, as, as, I, as you stated earlier, I've been in the ministry for going on 22 years. 15 years of that was in youth ministry. Yeah. Uh, about two and a half to three years, I was associate pastor, and I'm going on four years of senior pastor in that Word of Faith Center uh, here in Kennewick, Washington. And even before I stepped into the ministry, I was really doing ministry um, even in my high school years. Yeah. We had a Bible club. We were involved in taking the gospel to our school. And so this journey has, it, it, it's been an amazing journey. Um, I, at, at the time, I didn't see myself stepping into, the, stepping into youth ministry. Yeah. Um, I knew I was called. That opportunity presented itself. I prayed about it. There was a gentleman that was on staff at the time, one of the pastors, as I was praying and seeking God, he specifically said to me, some opportunities only come to you once. So you need to really prayerfully seek God about this decision. Yeah. And that was my entryway into ministry was 
was becoming a youth pastor. And so during those years, I learned a lot of stuff. I learned a lot of things from the School of Hard Knocks. Yeah. I mean, it was a great season of, of mentoring from my senior pastor at the time, Pastor Doug Graves. Um, everything I went through during those 15 years and even the three and a half years of serving my predecessor as associate pastor has prepared me for where I am today. And so one of the lessons that I would really uh, share with our viewers is faithfulness. Yeah. If you cannot be faithful to another man's vision, God will not give you your own. Wow. Faithfulness so is absolutely essential. And I see young men and young women today who want to go to the top overnight. Mm -hmm. And they haven't paid their dues, yep. they haven't served, and they haven't served without being paid. Yeah. That's so and key. that's so key. Yep. That is so key that you're willing to serve and not use your job and not use everything else in your life as an excuse. Yep. Some people, they want to be the pastor. They want to be on paid staff. They want to do this. They want to do that. But they're not faithful to show up to a prayer meeting. Yeah. They're not faithful to show up to a leadership meeting as a volunteer. And so I served in ministry as a volunteer for at least six years yeah. before I became the senior, excuse me, before I became youth pastor. Yeah. And even when I started as a youth pastor, I couldn't uh, move, I, the finances, it just wasn't there. Yeah. It was a very small salary. At the time, I was still living at home with my mom. And so yeah. it worked for me at that season. Yeah. But even that was a test yeah. because there are people that would have turned the job down because the money wasn't right. Yep. And so there, there's the faithfulness test that you've got to pass. There is the money test that you've got to pass. Yeah. Honestly, thank you so much for sharing that because I, I know that there's a lot of uh, young people who feel called to the ministry and sometimes in that stage where you're trying to figure out your own life as well, you get mixed up with calling and career. Yes. And then that your calling always equates to career and it may or may not lead down that path, you know? And I think, like you said, faithfulness really is, you know, being faithful in what God has given you in the calling and walking in your calling. And the scripture you know? is so clear. In, in Ephesians chapter four and verse 11, Paul says, and he gave some, to be apostles, prophets, yep. pastors, teachers, and evangelists for the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yeah. I want to draw your attention to the word some. He yep. gave some. Yeah. So there are a lot of self-appointed pastors out there, yep. a lot of self-appointed prophets. Mm -hmm. He gave some. So not everyone is supposed to be a five-fold ministry gifting. Yeah. We need people in the marketplace. Yeah, come on. Now, some are called to the fivefold ministry, but all of us, including those in the fivefold ministry, are called to the ministry of yeah. reconciliation. Yep. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 20. Yeah. You don't have to quit your full-time job to serve in the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're all called to do that. And so... The full-time ministry, like where you're being paid by the church, again, is not for everyone. Yeah. Uh, there is a price to pay if you're going to be in the full-time ministry. It's an honor. It is an absolute privilege, but it is a sobering responsibility yeah. to, be in, to be entrusted with other people. Yeah. And it's not something that should be taken lightly, and it should not be treated as a career. Right. It's a calling. Yeah. It's a calling that requires an anointing. Yeah. If there's no anointing, you can't do this. Yeah. And the anointing comes through prayer, through fasting, yeah. through blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 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 Wow. That was so good. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And I know that just you by saying that cleared up, I think, uh, will clear up a lot of things for a lot of people, you know, um, especially those who would find themselves in that volunteer slash minister slash you know not really sure where I'm at kind of stage yeah. and, you know just to be faithful in what they have and in due time God will make clear you know God honors faithfulness the Bible yeah. tells us over in Proverbs I believe it's Proverbs chapter 28 20 somewhere yeah. in there I'm just not remembering off the top of my head where it is but he says a faithful man 
yeah. will abound with blessings. A faithful man. Yeah. And even as we talk about faithfulness, I'm reminded about a friend of mine who recently just stepped into full-time ministry. He's been a part of his church for almost 20 years. Wow. He had a full-time job, but he was serving, going to prayer meetings, doing whatever his pastor had required of him. He would serve, he would help, wherever there was a need. He never used his job as an excuse. He never used his family as an excuse because yeah. his wife served in ministry as well. They had children, baseball games, football games, all, yeah. everything that he had going on. But for years, he served as a volunteer. Wow. And now, we're not even talking six months, he is in full-time ministry wow. at his church. Wow. And But he served without a paycheck for almost 20 years. That is, wow. God honors faithfulness. Wow. God honors faithfulness. It's true, it's true. In that same in that same light, we're talking about God honors faithfulness and being faithful and faithful to the calling. Can you tell and share with us, uh, the viewers and myself, how how do you avoid burnout? So we're talking about faithfulness. How do you how do you keep going in faithfulness? I believe the number one key to avoiding burnout is your relationship with God. Yeah, that's good. You need to be a person of prayer. You need to have a prayer life. You need to be a person of the word. You need to have a devotional life. Fasting should be a part of your routine as a Christian. And you pray and you read the Bible for yourself, not just to get a sermon. Wow. Some pastors, mm -hmm. they study to get a sermon. Now I study and prepare to, to get messages for my congregation and for other avenues to, you know, as the Lord opens those doors. Yeah. But my study time does not replace my devotional time. Yeah. And some pastors, again, they'll, they'll mix it in and it's the same. No, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. See, when I'm studying for the people, I'm in the kitchen cooking. I'm yeah. preparing for them. Yeah. When I read the Bible, because I like to read in the mornings, I'm reading for myself. I'm yeah. not trying to, to find a sermon. I'm feeding my spirit. The yeah. Apostle Paul, or actually really not the Apostle Paul, but over in the book of Acts, the Bible's very clear. In Acts chapter, I believe it's 19, he says, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. The word take heed there in the Greek means to pay very close attention to. So first and foremost, as a pastor, as a minister, it's my responsibility to take heed to myself, take care of myself, feed myself spiritually, have a prayer life, have a devotional life, have a real authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you avoid burnout. Those of you who are watching, that's how you avoid burnout. Spend yeah. time in the presence of God every single day without fail. You don't take a vacation. You can take a vacation from your job. You can even take a vacation from, let's say if you're in full-time ministry and you're like, hey, we're gonna take a week and we're gonna go to Florida. We're gonna take a week and we're gonna take the family to Silverwood. That's fine. But even when you're on vacation, you set aside time to pray. You set aside time to read your Bible. That's how you avoid burnout. Wow. And I believe that we overcomplicate things. We want to give you seven keys of this, 15 keys of that, <laughs> 25 keys of this. You don't need 25 keys to that. You just need to pray, read your Bible, and allow that word to transform your life. You know, as preachers, we just need to do what we tell other people to do on Sunday mornings. Right. We stand up in the pulpit and we preach stuff. Don't just preach it, live it. Yeah. Live it. Let's yeah. be, we, we, we are to be an example to the flock of God. Yeah. I can't tell my people to develop a prayer life if I don't have a prayer life. Yeah. So it's important that we pray. Yeah. Amen. Wow, that's so good. Um, I was actually reminded um, as you were speaking, I was just thinking of like how, you know, Queen Vashti, how, you know, the king had called her in, right, you know, uh, and how, you know, she was busy serving the people, so she didn't have time to come into the palace with him, and she ended up losing her place, but Esther, she valued the place of the palace more than just the the work of the, you know, you know helping people, and because she valued that, she, her place was given in ministry her place I mean her place with uh, an authority was given 
because she valued the presence, being in front of the presence of the king rather than just working in the palace. And I think so many times in ministry as you were speaking, it was making me think of how oftentimes we'll be so involved in doing ministry rather than just being in his presence. You yes. Know? rather than just spending time with him. And that's where favor comes from. Yes. That's where the favor in ministry comes from, is being in his presence. Absolutely. And so, honestly, thank you so much for sharing all these yes, things. I yes. think it was just powerful uh, what you shared um, with our viewers. Right now, would you be able to pray for them? And uh, those people who are going through burnout or are in that stage of ministry where they're trying to find their place, that God would help them to d develop that faithfulness. Yes, we will pray. And so yeah. if you're, those of you who are watching, I just want you to agree with me as Bryson and I pray. I'm gonna pray for you. And I believe that there are many who are watching right now that you're called. There's a calling on your life. Maybe you don't have a mentor. I encourage you, find a mentor. Yeah. See, everyone needs a Paul in their life. You need somebody that can speak into your life, that can help you, that can disciple you, that can help you become that minister of the gospel, that man of God, that woman of God. And so, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are watching right now. Spirit of God, I thank you for great grace upon their lives. I plead the blood of Jesus over every one of our viewers. I pray a hedge of divine protection around them. I send forth the angels of God to go before them, behind them, beside them, and all the way around them to keep them from calamity, evil, and misfortune. I release the grace of God into the lives of your people. And I'm asking you, Spirit of God, to give every person under the sound of my voice, yes. every viewer, the desire and the power to do what's pleasing to you. I ask you to increase their passion for your presence. Give them a strong appetite for your word. Give unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. Open the eyes of their understanding. Cause them to comprehend and perceive the word of God. I pray for clarity of thought. I pray for sharpened focus, and I pray for renewed yes. drive. Amen. Psalms 32 8 says that I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way you shall go, and I will guide you with my eye. And so I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are doing exactly that for your people. We thank you for these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Pastor Marlando. It was a pleasure thank having you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. It's an honor to be here today. Yes.